solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. Let's talk about feedback, David. I think uh, as I read your book, this whole notion of uh, over the net uh, really, really caught my attention. I think uh, when I was at McKinsey, uh, we were taught the SBI model of feedback, situation, behavior, impact in the way you sort of communicate um, feedback. But I love the metaphor of, you know, playing a racket sport across the net and not cr- playing. Uh, you've You've heard commentators say you, you can only control your side of the net. I really <laughs> yeah, love right. the way I really love the way you sort of map that to the process of uh, feedback. So can you sort of bring that to life for us, this notion of over the net and not crossing the net? Yes. Yeah, we start with the assumption. In fact, we say this in the book. Carol and I believe you can say almost anything to almost anybody if you stick with your reality. Mm-hmm. In fact, we add after two glasses of wine, we dropped the almost because we <laughs> sort of in our heart of hearts think you can say anything to anybody if you stick with your reality. But being academics, we have sort of uh, cover ourselves. So what do we mean by three realities? In interacting, I only know two realities and you know two realities. So let's take give up you and me. Reality number one is my motives, intentions, which leads to my behavior. Reality number two, my words, my nonverbals, my tone, etc. The third reality is the impact on you. How does it affect you? So the model is similar to the McKinsey model, but we, I think, elaborate a little differently. And what we say is, I know two realities my motives, and I can see the behavior. You know two realities. You can see the behavior, and you know the effect on you. But you don't know my motives, and I don't know the impact. But I need to know the impact if I'm to be effective. So we then envision a, uh, we actually envision two tennis nets, but I'm going to talk about one. Mm -hmm. The first one is between my intentions, motives, and intentions, and my behavior. The second net is between behavior and your effect, but let me focus on the first. Mm -hmm. As in tennis, you can't play in the other person's back court. We often get into trouble so frequently, and conflict gets worse, because you, the recipient of my behavior, don't stay on your side of the court. So think of how much but what uh, feedback is so commonly used in organizations. We say to somebody else, well, you just don't want to be a team player. Uh, you just want to put your own area. You, you don't care about uh, me or, or my area. Uh, you just want to dominate. Well, you're over the net because you're making statements about my motives and intentions that you don't know. It's a, it's a story you're making up. Hmm. And so when we say, stick with your reality, you could say anything. Let's uh, imagine that um, you're now feeling uh, a little tuned out because you're experiencing me as giving you more information than you want. So if you were to say, well, David, do you just want to show how smart you are? I'm going to get defensive, but the other problem with that is I can just say, no, I don't, Hmm. and it has little impact. But if you stick with your reality and you say, David, I'm feeling bothered and I'm feeling a little tuned out because Hmm. I'm experiencing you as going on and on and talking too much. Hmm. Now, now I can't say, no, you don't, Hmm. or I'm over your net. You know, I'm likely to say, well, I'm sorry. That's not 
my intention. I'm trying to be helpful. And you can say, well, I'm glad you're trying to be helpful. And I'd like you to be helpful, but the way you're now acting isn't helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And now we could have a conversation of how I can be helpful. And so much of conflict is accusations, uh, making up these stories, and people not sticking with what they knew, know, which is, this is how I feel. This is how your behavior is impacting me. Mm. And this is how it's getting interfering with our relationship. And, and staying with that, say, uh, if I may, David, but, and staying with that tennis rally that you just sort of outlined, uh, you sort of spoke about staying on the same side of the net. Uh, right. And what would be uh, crossing the net? Is there something around the how we come across the emotional state, the regulation, the listening? Can you sort of paint a little bit of uh, context around um, the manner in which uh, we frame these, uh, you know, uh, responses? Well, the better the relationship, the more variance we can have. But uh, I think that I don't have to be super careful or pussyfoot around, as we say in the States. Hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm not experiencing this, so I'm going to make this up, Deepak, so please. So I think if uh, if you did some stuff that bothered me, I think I could say, hey, Deepak, uh, come on. I'm really feeling bothered about what you're doing. And it's getting in the way of, of this interview. I think I could be forceful like that. I'm talking about myself. I am bothered. Hmm. And it's hurting me and assuming you're concerned about the relationship, it's hurting you too. That's very different than me attacking you or making suppositions about your motives or intentions. Hmm. Hmm. Got it. Got it. So, and, and I want to stress this because you don't have to be so careful and so nice particularly if my concern is for you as well as me and for the relationship. You know, if I'm really, if something's getting in the way of us working together, I can say that with a lot of feeling. Hey, I'm, I'm really upset about what's going on. And you're like, you say, well, what is it? If I can stick with the behavior hmm. and how it's impacting you. Hmm. Now, I want to come back to the whole notion of self-disclosure. One of the ways we tend to protect ourselves is not to let ourselves be vulnerable. Now, we have to be careful about vulnerability. But if we are interacting, it often helps. If I'm feeling hurt or if I'm feeling put down, or if I'm feeling envious, to say it. If I could say, hey, Deepak, I really felt hurt by that comment. Hmm. Um, now, the worst thing you could say, which I don't think you would, is, well, that's your problem, David. And I would say, no. I say, that doesn't help me. It hurts a little bit more. But it hurts both of us. It's not just my problem, because this hmm. is a consequence. And you see how honest a conversation we could have this way if we each stick with our reality. 